theorem. So now we need to assume that m is compact. Again, m, m is a uh, dx mod gamma. And, uh, and uh, here is an exercise. You remember there are two types of isometries. There are hyperbolic isometries and parabolic isometries. There are also elliptic isometries, but they, they we need to consider them only when we consider all before. Now we consider manifold. Uh, it's an easier life for us. At some point, I would like to consider all before, but this may be in next year. And, and, uh, but, uh, so the hyperbolic isometries and parabolic isometries. Parabolic isometries are indication of non compactness Actually, <laughs> here is the exercise that I give you. Uh, if M is compact, uh, all the uh, all the elements of gamma are, are hyperbolic. So uh, M, uh, it's more than that. So so first, it's if and only if. If M <coughs> X mod gamma, so gamma is a group, is compact, then any uh, gamma in gamma is hyperbolic. In fact, for this you don't need the, uh, uh, you can assume also torsion. So, so in fact, if I don't assume that M is a manifold, um, but only an orbifold, I, I would say that M, which is X mod gamma, is compact if and only then any gamma is semi-simple. It's either hyperbolic or elliptic. And this is, a, I think it's a good exercise. Remember, what, what does it mean that it's hyperbolic? It means that the, the displacement function attains the minimum. So, so, uh, so that's, but any function on a compact space attains the minimum. So from that you can actually do take a compact fundamental domain and, and play with that. And it's, it's not a hard exercise, it's good, I leave it to you. Uh, the second is that it's if and only if. So if M is non-compact, if uh, the volume of M is finite, but M is not compact, then uh, gamma admits a non-trivial parabolic element. So this is the second part of the exercise. Uh, think about this exercise. Again, in next year's course, I will prove all these things when we study the part of the geometry group. But, uh, but for now, just think about this exercise. And this helps us. Why? Because uh, <coughs> you remember that if we had that uh, Margulis lemma allows us to deal with to, to to, to, I mean, tell us that what we need to understand uh, is virtually an important group of isometries. And uh, if you have an important group of isometries, if you remember, if, if, the, if the group is not abelian, then, uh, then you should remember that we show that if the group is not abelian, then in the center you can find a parabolic element. I remind you from last time that if uh, if we n is an important group of isometries and uh, of rank k and k is bigger than one and is bigger than uh, one, so it's not a billion. So if you look at, uh, at c k minus one the, in the central discrete series, this was consisting of parabolic. Parabolic and elliptic algebraically parabolic element. And now we don't have elliptic, so so there will be parabolic. So the, the corollary is that if we are in a, if the manifold that we consider is, is a compact, then any important sum of gamma is actually commutative. So, so that's the corollary. This uh, core. Under this assumption, 
any nilpotent subgroup of gamma is commutative. So you don't need to assume it's torsion free for that. Torsion free for the second one. No, uh, here I assume it's torsion free. I assume manifold. Uh, all this, all this thing is is about manifold. The only thing that I say that it's true even without manifold is, is that star. But then instead of hyperbolic, uh, consider a simple, replace hyperbolic by semi simple. And the second one is not? The second one is. Okay, so what do we know about um, this? So, so, so we had another lemma. Uh, I recall you that we proved the following lemma. Uh, if uh, alpha and beta commute, uh, commute, so and uh, they are both hyperbolic, then mean alpha intersect non-trivially mean beta. If you want mean alpha is beta invariant, and then you can project everything there, and the projection is a beta invariant function. It's because this is non-increased distances, and from that you, you can show that uh, the displacement not only decreases when you project, and you, so this will be non-empty is non-empty and it's isomorphic to um, let's say to x uh, let's call it uh, w cross uh, rk so actually k is one or two <laughs> so, so it's actually w cross r or w cross r2 and uh, both acts uh, uh, alpha, uh, uh, so, so if you call this, uh, let's call it my minimum uh, alpha beta, so, so each of them uh, acts, and each of them uh, both act by uh, ID here and translation. Okay, I think we proved that. Maybe the proof was not uh, complete because uh, at some point in the proof I needed something uh, equivalent to the flat strip theorem and the, the flat close theorem, so, so uh, which I didn't prove, but. Uh, we discussed that. We, we had this not just for two commuting, but for a billion group, which commuting does not. Okay. <coughs> now suppose we're in the following situation. Suppose that alpha and beta are both stable. Uh, so lemma. If uh, alpha and beta they are both in gamma, are stable, and uh, E alpha less than epsilon intersect non-trivially E beta less than epsilon, then they commit. How does, recall, how does a hyperbolic element, uh, <coughs> so recall, how a hyperbolic element act? So if gamma is hyperbolic, 
הרי כל דף גמא היא דייפופולית then min gamma is a totally geodetic sub-manifold, it's a union of excess, is of the form uh, some, I don't know, W cross R. And gamma acts uh, on, on the set, uh, on W cross R, by uh, ID uh, translation. So this is, if, if you want this R is the axis, but maybe in negative curvature there's only one axis. In, in, higher, in higher rank, in, in non-positive curvature, there may be many axes and they are parallel to each other and, and you translate them along there. So that's how every hyperbolic element acts. What happened, what happened if, if we take, replace gamma by a power? So here on this set, it's, it's obvious. It's still act by ID, and that instead of translating by, by A, it will translate by KA, to the power of K. But maybe the minimal set will increase. If we take power of an element, maybe suddenly, on, on this it will still act like that, but maybe the minimal set will be larger. If we replace a gamma by a gamma to the K, then the minimal set of gamma to the k is, uh, is now w prime uh, cross r, where w prime may be a larger set than w. So maybe there are more elements. Suppose, you, you, suppose even you have only one geodesic and you rotate around it. No, it doesn't fix anything else. But you rotate around it by some, let's say, rational uh, rotation. So after we take the, the right power, suddenly some rotation uh, uh, become uh, trivial. So you suddenly you increase the, the, the more excess. Okay, but this will not happen if gamma was stable and the power was small. So now we can prove this lemma. Uh, so four. d gamma, d alpha less than epsilon intersect uh, d beta less than epsilon non-trivially implies by the Margulis lemma that the group alpha beta has, uh, contains a normal subgroup, normal abelian subgroup, of index less than m. No, a balanced subgroup, let's call it uh, A, of index less than m. Right? Normal nilpotent. Magus Emma said normal nilpotent. But now, by what we said, we know that nilpotent mean a barrier. Because we deal only with hyperbolic elements. There are no parabolics, and uh, so, 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 no, so it has normal abelian subgroup. So now, uh, uh, there are i and j less than m, such that alpha to the i and beta to the j belong to this commutative sum. So it means that mean alpha to the i uh, intersect mean beta to the j by what we said uh, somewhere here uh, because two hyperbolic elements that commute and this intersection is w cross uh, r or r2 uh, depending whether the, the texts are parallel or not uh, let's say r uh, to 
took it to college K because K is either one or two. And, uh, and, and the action <coughs> and both act, <coughs> act by ID calculation. Here. But that's the powers. Now we call that alpha and beta, we assume that they are stable. Alpha and beta are stable. And for stable element, the action is is the same. A stable element, the minimal set does not change when you take a power, and uh, and only the translation change. So for stable element, since alpha, since alpha and beta are stable, uh, mean alpha equals mean alpha to the i, and mean beta. Uh, equals mean uh, beta to the j, and the action alpha and beta acts on the same space. So this is the intersection of mean alpha and mean beta now. Uh, so it acts on w cos r k, uh, but each of them act uh, by uh, id and the same translation as before divided by by i so alpha act by this divided by the same translation translation of uh, let's say that we had here of alpha to the i but divided by i it's a Euclidean space you can define and beta acts uh, on uh, on w cos r k by id, uh, the translation of beta to the j divided by j. OK, so two translations for use. This implies that alpha and beta restricted to this subset from use. So, and this implies that the commutator of alpha, beta, alpha inverse, beta inverse, has a fixed point, has a fixed point, because the commutator, they compute on this minimal set, so, uh, so all this minimal set will be a fixed point, and this minimal set is non-empty, non but the action is free, but the gamma acts freely. imply that alpha and beta <coughs> So now we're in a really good shape. Because everything, locally everything commutes. <coughs> As This is actually what, uh, this is the new, new ingredient <coughs> from yesterday. Uh, so now, uh, okay, so, so look again, uh, look again at on the stable thick part, or the stable thin part, M less than epsilon uh, thin part for the union of D gamma less than epsilon, such as gamma is stable. And uh, in M bigger for the complement, and, uh, and then you project it to, to the manifold itself. So this is a union a union of convex set with smooth boundary so it's like this you imagine the alpha less than epsilon and here somewhere the beta less than epsilon 
Imagine if they coincide actually, if the angle is zero, then they have the same normal. The, the angle, the angle is, is, the angle is pi minus the angle between the normal. Imagine two, imagine, okay, yeah, yeah. imagine yeah. small, small, if this, the angle here is small, then you see that the normals yeah, the inner product of the normal is is, is, uh, is negative. <coughs> yes, so this is a uh, so this is what we have, and now we want somehow to control the com the topological complexity of the thing. This I cannot do in fifteen minutes. I'll do it next time, but I'll explain you the idea. And before explaining the idea, I will explain why, why, is it, why is it not uh, obvious how to control it? Because we are in a thick part, and the QT radius is large, we can put both. Mm -hmm. The problem is that the thick part is a complement of a uh, thing like that. And now when you put ball here, uh, you put a ball in the thick part, it's not a ball anymore. But this one looks okay, still okay. I mean, it's, it's not a ball, but uh, topologically it looks like a ball. But what happens if in the thin part you have something like that? You have a very sharp thing in the thin part. And then you have a point in the thick part and you put a ball around it, but you remove the thin part. So maybe you're left with something which is not even connected. Or maybe it is connected, but, uh, but not contractible so on. So balls stop to be nice when you intersection, when you restrict them to the thick part. <coughs> uh, and uh, you can imagine more complicated things. I mean, when you look not at one old ball, but at two balls and, uh, and so on, maybe you can imagine things. So <coughs> what is the idea? The idea is to, re to replace the thin part. The thin part, one thing that we don't like about the thin part from this picture uh, is if it has sharp, sharp things. Like if, if you find in thin part something like that, you're not happy. Because how can you put a ball in the thin part when you have knit, 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 knit. So the idea would be to take a small neighborhood of the thin part. We will replace the thin part by some neighborhood. You see, when you take and you replace the thing by, by a neighborhood, you will not have sharp shapes. Suddenly, at any point here, you can inject a ball which tangent from inside. So, it's, so the boundary of the thin part will be the curvature of the boundary of the thin part will be bounded below. The, the, it's, of 
any of any component, of any convex component of the thin part, it will be bounded below. This is one thing that we do. <coughs> so, so that's the first idea, but then it's still not clear. But what we need is actually to play with two types, two neighborhoods. Uh, the idea was that uh, if you have the thin part, uh, I don't know, if, you know if, uh, if this is the thin part, and the idea is to first to take one neighborhood of it, uh, replace it by one neighborhood, which uh, Alex Rubotsky called call the, the FET, and then uh, another neighborhood which which you call the dress. Uh, so there is the fat and the dress will be a, 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 you know, a Schumann Vassimla. The fat will be a, a, a small neighborhood, but the dress will be an even much smaller neighborhood. And the, the, the thick part that we will consider will be the complement of the fat, but the centers of the ball that we will play with will be on the complement of the dress. So it will be even a smaller, and then, and then we, can, we can do it, uh, uh, we, we can do it, uh, we can do everything we want, but, uh, but let me uh, give some definition <coughs> and start to go towards the proof and maybe expand the idea. So, so what is a neighborhood, so, so in general, so let x uh, be a metric space, but uh, again, uh, consider an amount space and and uh, and let t be a, a, a number and a a subset of x. Then uh, a t is the t neighborhood. Defined to be the union of all ball of radius t, uh, where x is run over a, or if you want, it's also the set of all x in x, such that the distance from x to a is less than at the t neighborhood. And uh, Maybe some small exercise here. If A is convex, then also A2 is convex. <coughs> Another definition that uh, uh, is the, the shrinking. Uh, the shrinking of A, the T shrinking, the T shrinking, it would be, uh, I will denote it by, by this, instead of enlarging, I, I, I cut from A, and it will be, uh, will be x minus the t neighborhood of x minus a. So if you want, um, the set for x such that the descent of x to the complement is bigger than So if I take a neighborhood of the thin part, it's amount of taking a shrinking of the thick part. <coughs> okay. And now still on the intuitive level. Didn't you say that the thick part has a color neighborhood? Yeah, w I said it w without proving it. Uh, actually, the the if you want, uh, yeah, the, 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 
for small for so small t, the color of neighborhood this would be a color neighborhood, the fifth color or the same color. Um, but uh, this thing, I didn't prove it yet. It's actually, you have all the data to prove it. I mean, <laughs> you need compactness, right? What? You need. I mean, the thick part is compact. These are so, so far just the finisher. One thing, one thing that I, 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 one hint of why do I want so much to control the angle, uh, suppose we have a sh very sharp angle. So this is, this is, if you, this is like M less than M. This is the, the thing part. So suppose we have a very sharp uh, neighborhood, very sharp angle, and now we take uh, for small t, we take the the. Now for small t, we want to take the 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 t neighborhood of of uh, of this of this uh, the t neighborhood of the thing part. So what is small t? I, I take some small neighborhood. What you see? When I take a small neighborhood, suddenly the, the, this corner moves a lot. <coughs> and suppose that uh, I told you before that I, I'm going to play with two neighbors, neighborhoods. So suppose this was already the first neighborhood, and, and, then, and then I will move to the second. And sa sa now we want to put balls centered here that will cover not until here, but un at least until here. And we will we'll have a problem because the corner moved a lot. Th this is intuitively, wh why do I want to control angle? If I, if I have a, a, a if the angle is bigger than 90 degree, and when I take a neighborhood, Maybe the distance will move, but uh, bounded amount by, I don't know, square root of n, uh, whatever. It will move, by, but uh, maybe more than, if I take t neighborhood, it will move by more than t, but by some constant times t. So I, I can control everything. So this is a <coughs> some intuition why, why I need to control the, the angle. So lemma one, uh, or, or, or the target, target is the form. Uh, <coughs> first, we, we, will, we have m uh, bigger than epsilon, that's the epsilon thick part. And then uh, we take uh, the, the shrinking of it. And then we have m uh, bigger than epsilon and we shrink it by uh, we shrink it by let's say epsilon over 10 or epsilon over 100 that doesn't matter we shrink it a bit and, and I will show that this uh, our, our homotopy uh, there is a deformation with fact uh, so lemma 1 that this does not change the approach uh, <coughs> of homotopy. Actually, I will show that there is a, a, a refraction. But, uh, so this is the first time. I, ca I can replace it by shrinking. <coughs> Secondly, uh, our lemma two it will be lemma one. Lemma two uh, will say that here the angle was good. I 
frame that here, the angles are at least as good as here. Uh, the angles <coughs> at corner uh, only improve. C cannot, uh, cannot go worse. Uh, are still I will do it precisely. Uh, I still uh, at least by one. So when I replace this by this, uh, I still have this uh, condition. <coughs> this will be step two. So let's call them steps. Uh, step three. the house of distance between uh, let's get let's give this a name so this will be this will be from now on m prime the out of distance between m prime and m prime shrink shrinked farther m prime was the shrinking of the thick part and m prime uh, the shrink it farther so this distance may be May, it will be maybe bigger than t, as I said before, but but it's at most b times t. Well, b is a constant. Depends on the dimension only. The constant depends on only the dimension. So this will be step three. W what are you assuming about m prime? M prime is is this shrinking. Uh. M prime, I just uh, I wanted to <coughs> basically this. If you want, you can write it as M uh, bigger than epsilon uh, tau shrink by epsilon over hundred plus t. If I do a shrinking of a shrinking, is the same as the shrinking by the two power by the sum. Of but I, I, I will, now I'm replacing the stable tick by, by, by this M prime, which is nicer to work with, but I will need to, <coughs> to, to, <coughs> the next step will be, I will, I, I will have to choose T sufficiently small. I, I, I just, uh, tell you what are the steps now. So, <coughs> um, uh, okay, is it step four? Maybe to this, for this I will use some compactness argument. Uh, for small t, uh, there exists t zero such that. Okay. Uh, I, I, I will. I will now say the following. Uh, <coughs> uh, okay. Uh, uh, the idea will be. I don't know. I'm. I'm, I'm competing with the time and. Uh, and uh, <coughs> the idea now will be that, that we will like to, we will cover, we, we will choose delta small, delta, which will be much smaller than epsilon, but, uh, but a constant, and cover uh, m prime, by b plus one times uh, delta both center at a, a maximal delta discrete
subset of a M prime shrinked by delta <coughs> we will show that for sufficiently small but constant delta the union of this ball will be a homo not exactly a <coughs> a delta balls sent by uh, okay, we, we will show, now it's not a ball anymore because I restrict it to M prime and the ball, like before, goes out but we will show that uh, this will be a good cover for small delta small delta, this is a good cover but small depends only on the dimension, not, not on M a good cover <laughs> Uh, and uh, and and will and this will be the field because it's a good cover, and therefore uh, the nerve of this cover, which we will know <coughs> that it's a d alpha v superficial complex, uh, will be homotopy to to m prime. Okay, that, that, that's the idea, and, and I I want to sh show you what, but for the. Uh, Okay, we, we we will do these steps and uh, <coughs> and there is some nice. Uh, for for example, I can tell you now what is B. So here is an exercise for next week. Uh, uh, given and there is a B such that. If uh, uh, I don't know uh, if uh, let's call it S is uh, a collection of unit vector unit vector in Rn such that the inner foil act is always positive then there is some cons there is some n such that the inner product is at least one over b which is of it's a this is an elementary exercise but we will need it and this is how I will choose this constant b and uh, okay so so okay we'll do the details of this next week and, uh,